Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to the judges, teachers, guests, participants and everyone present. Welcome back our loyal spectators for today and greetings to our new viewers to the 9th Online Fully Residential Schools International Symposium 2021. We have finally reached our last but definitely not least session for today. I hope everyone has filled their empty stomachs and are energized to proceed with our session. I had a delicious meal of nasi ayam. How about you, Alia? You are muted. Oh, I'm sorry. I had a scrumptious bowl of laksa for lunch. Wow, just listening to it makes my mouth water. Well, enough about food. I think it's time to continue on with our itinerary. I'm passing the baton to you, Alia. Thank you, Hannah. First, we would like to inform all of you that there will be an online quiz posted in the chat box. For your information, the online quiz will be open until tomorrow at 10 a.m. We will be having different sets of questions according to the tracks, so be sure to be on the lookout. As planned for today, we will have 16 teams overall to present their research videos with us. However, in this session, we are going to look at the presentations from the last five teams. Before we proceed any further, I would like to reintroduce our esteemed judges for today. The chief judge is Puan Farah Mardi Aman, the director of English Language Teaching Center Malaysia. Our second judge is Ms. Almia Hani Binti Sidi from Sekolah Menengah Sains Hulu Selangor. And lastly, our third judge is Mr. Muhammad Anwar bin Ibrahim from College Tunku Kursia. And we, Nurul Alia Carmila, and my lovely co-moderator, Nurhanah Muhammad Muazzam are both from Sekolah Sri Putri. Now, do allow me to remind you of the rules. Firstly, the presentation must focus on the sub-team assigned to the team. In this track, the sub-team is Global Economic Consequences of the COVID-19 Pandemic. Next, the duration of the presentation should not be more than 10 minutes. And lastly, a question and answer session will be conducted after each presentation. Let's not waste any more time and let's invite the first team, which is Sekolah Menengah Sains Tengku Muhammad Faris Petra to present their presentation entitled Global Economic Consequences of the COVID-19 Pandemic Drastic Measure to Revive Economy. Here with us today, we have Nur Natasha Izian Osman and Tengku Lija Wafa, Tengku Shahri Zani as the presenters for this team. Please welcome. Hello everyone, I hope you are in a very good condition physically, mentally and not forgetting financially. My name is Daniel Atiman bin Rasman from Tengku Muhammad Faris Petra Science School acting as the leader of the team. This video will serve as our presentation for the Fully Residential Schools International Symposium with the title of Global Economic Consequences of the COVID-19 Pandemic under the theme COVID-19 Gains and Losses. To kick off, let me first define the terms given in the theme and title to give everyone a clear idea of what the theme and title are. Firstly, we have COVID-19 pandemic. Essentially, it means the outbreak of the coronavirus disease which has a high infection rate throughout the world. Gains and losses represent favorable and unfavorable events. Next, we have the global economy. 
it means the economy of the world's individual countries considered together as a single economy. Lastly, we have consequences. It means a result or effects, typically one that is unwelcome or unpleasant. Hence, contextually, the definition of our given title, Global Economic Consequences of the COVID-19 Pandemic, means the effects on the global economy that are being affected by the COVID-19 Pandemic. COVID-19 Turmoils to most blessing in disguise for some economic sectors. COVID-19, without a doubt, had caused many sectors of economy to go down. However, surprisingly, there are still some businesses that actually gains from this pandemic, especially this one industry in particular. Well, I'm talking about the rise of pharmaceutical industries. Pharmaceutical companies act as the center stage in fighting COVID-19. These companies are experiencing a positive growth on their stock market as the demand for the way to prevent and cure disease are rising. To show you just how much they have actually gained, here are some pictures that indicate the increase in revenue that they gain. Here is the picture from the website Macro Trends that shows the AstraZeneca quarterly revenue. To show you how much they gain, let us look at their revenue in the time span of 6 months in 2021 compared to the last 6 months of 2020. During the first 6 months of 2021, the revenue of AstraZeneca is $15,540 million compared to $13,988 million during the last 6 months of 2020. Well, for Pfizer, this picture from the website Statista clearly indicates a huge growth in revenue compared to the recent years as a large margin of revenue gain in 2021 came from their COVID-19 vaccine. Well, this certainly shows just how much the pharmaceutical companies gains from the pandemic. We even conducted a survey and interview to prove that. Next, we are going to be discussing about the negative consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic towards the economy. The first negative consequence of the COVID-19 pandemic towards the tourism sector is that the unemployment is on the rise. This can be proven by the statement from Astro Awani that the unemployment rate in Malaysia has increased in May 2021 to more than 728,000 people which is equivalent to 4.5%. To strengthen the first point, according to the Investopedia, unemployment leads to higher payments from states and governments for employment benefits, food assistance and Medicaid. For instance, also in July 2020, payment from states and federal governments of United States of America for unemployment benefits totaled to $18.26 billion. People with jobs like pilot and hostess and tourist agency staff are the most affected ones as they are working in tourism industry. Next, the global tourism industry is crumbling. The data right here from the World Tourism Organization shows the percentage of international tourist arrivals to five categories of country, which are America, Europe, Africa, Middle East, along with Asia and Pacific, on January until October 2020, that has shown a huge drop compared to the 2019, which is 70%. Countries that are most reliant on tourism like Maldives, British Virgin Islands and Macau are suffering twice than the developed countries such as America and Belgium. On the local side, Malaysia alone has registered the decreasing of international tourist arrivals which is 83.4% between 2019 and 2020. The huge gap between those two years in arrival of tourists has caused a massive loss towards the tourism sectors like travel agencies, hotels and a lot more. In order to support and gather information and data to solve our issue, a survey had to be carried out. Therefore, we use mixed research methodology to complete our survey. The methods are quantitative and qualitative methods. For the quantitative method, we provided questionnaires through Google Form. While for the qualitative method, we interviewed four people of the related industry. Three of them were the owners of their respective travel agency company. The remaining one percent was from pharmaceutical industry who owns a pharmacy named Medica Pharmacy. For the first method, which is qualitative method, we had interviewed three people from travel agencies and a pharmacist. The pharmacist owns a pharmacy named Medical Pharmacy in Kota Baru, Kelantan. Her name is Madam Razaida Benti Muhammad Yunus. From the interview, we knew that the pharmaceutical industry gains a lot from the economic occurrence since March 2020. Her profit has increased with a large margin. She was confident to say that she did not get any loss during this pandemic. The sales of health appliances, for instance, face masks, sanitizers, and oxygenator are increasing daily. She could conclude that the pharmaceutical industry is thriving well during this COVID-19 pandemic. Next, we interviewed three people from different travel agencies. They are all the owners of their respective travel agencies. They are Ms. Asmeda Benti Muhammad, the owner of Umi 
Vacation Kuala Lumpur, Datuk Ben, the owner of Jutawan Tours and Santai Cafe, Perth, Australia, and Mr. Saiful Bahari bin Datuk Saidin, the owner of Kosas Travel and Tours, Selangor. From the data that we collected by those three orders, we can conclude that all travel agencies have been going through a hard time during this pandemic. They are badly affected by this COVID-19 pandemic. They also said that most of them, the travel agencies owners all around in Malaysia, had to think of a new business to do during the lockdown. They added that all of the staffs are also badly affected financially as they could not get a full salary as before. They dare to say that their income has completely plummeted to zero. Hence, they are still striving and hoping that travel businesses will be reopened soon as they need to survive. Up till now, they are still relying on inside income and the government's help. The second method is the quantitative method. We created a set of questionnaires in the Google form and shared the link to 100 respondents in random. The age range of our target respondents are 25 years old above. As you can see on the screen right now, these are their details which were their occupations and age. From the data collected, majority 67% of the respondents are working with the government followed by non-government workers, 21% and many more. These questionnaires covered all of the aspects that we have stated in our abstract which are the focus of our research. They are about the resignations, tourism industry, public responsibility and how to revive the economy. We can conclude that our respondents have a high level of awareness on this COVID-19 pandemic as 79% vote for scale 4 to 5 to the question. However, some of them commented that there are still people who don't follow the SOP and some said that many who followed the SOP just because the authority are around and they want to avoid from being fined. 63% agree that tourism industry is the most affected and the slowest to recover due to this pandemic. Furthermore, 72% believe that the vaccinations program is the best to overcome the infection of the virus and live like usual as before. 80% of our respondents suggest that the economic sector need to be running as well with more stricter SOP. This is the only way to increase our country's economy. In order to overcome the issues and consequences of the pandemic, also to revive the economy of our country as well as global economy, we first team has come up with three suggestions of drastic measures as we believe that the situation requires drastic measures. First and foremost, the government should make the vaccination compulsory, which means every citizen that is eligible according to the requirements to receive the vaccine must take it whether they like it or not. That is because we need to think of greater disaster that the non-vaccinated group of people could bring to our country's economy and many other aspects if the chain of infections is still not broken. The main purpose of mandating the vaccination is to create herd immunity. Vaccinated people are protected from getting the disease, passing on the pathogen, breaking any chains of transmission, and also protecting those who are ineligible to be vaccinated. This way can increase the level of confidence among public to go out or travel as well as keeping the economic activities running. Next, travel bubble or travel bridges is good news for international and local tourism agencies and also for those who love travel. Certainly, stringent prevention and procedures will be improved implemented to reduce the importance of COVID-19. However, how can we restore the confidence in the people to go out or travel after almost two years being in the pandemic, with thousands of cases and many deaths reported daily? Our last suggestion will help answering this question. Hence, our last suggestion is the government and all related parties need to increase the public awareness of the consequences of the pandemic and also importance of following the operation procedure SOP. In order to achieve that, we need to ensure the public to strictly follow the SOP and we have a specific suggestion to the government which is the formation of special pandemic patrol where the government announces that a special pandemic patrol with a special badge and uniform assigned at all specific public places, people will be more confident to go up as they know that everything is under control and the risk of infection will be much lower than before. Therefore, the economic industries can continue to operate again with new norms and SOP and later our economy of various sectors will be revived. Finally, we strongly believe that drastic measures needed now, starting with vaccination, must be made compulsory, travel bubble should be implemented, and public responsibility awareness should be drastically increased with the role of special pandemic patrol unit. Being loyal citizens with public and moral responsibility, we should play significant roles as countermeasures to fight and overcome this threat. Understanding that the pandemic now has become endemic, we need to learn to live with the virus, but do not let it overtake and overrule our lives forever. We must remember that each and every one of us play a vital role in curbing the pandemic. Do not falter and keep your head up for each coming day. We must believe in the efforts that had and will be done by the government are aimed to make their global economy to revive and prosper once more. That's all from us. Take care and stay safe everyone. Thank you, Sekolah Menengah Sains Tengku Muhammad Faris Petra for such a brilliant presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed with the question and answer session. 
I would like to invite the audience to ask questions for the presenters to answer. First up, here's a question from the user Radzi Ang. From your opinion, what is the best initiative that our government has done or planned to improve our economy? Can our presenters please answer this user's question? May I take this question? Yes, you may. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Tengku Lidia and I'm from Fire Spectra. So the question is, what's the best initiative that our government has done or planned to improve our economy? So personally, um, uh, I see that uh, the government has uh, been giving uh, the uh, help uh, in the form of money uh, to the unemployed, um, the unemployed and those who um, have trouble in paying their debts. Uh, so um, I think the government has done their best uh, in um, helping the citizens, uh, the public, uh, to uh, cope with the, uh, this pandemic, but uh, there's still uh, room of improvement. Thank you. Thank you for your lengthy answer. Next up, we have a question from user Hanis Shafira Shafiin that goes, what were the obstacles you faced while preparing this research? Can our presenters please clear the air? Right, okay. Uh, the next question is, uh, what were the obstacles you faced while preparing this research? So uh, personally, I think uh, be unable uh, for us to uh, meet each other face to face uh, to discuss together uh, what was uh, our findings about uh, the research is um, the most um, the most uh, really uh, hard the most hard uh, part of uh, this project because um, I think uh, the when we communicate face to face we are able uh, to understand more uh, about uh, our uh, teammates' opinion and uh, ideas. So I think that's my answer. Thank you, presenters, for such a great explanation. Okay, so there are no more go. questions from the viewers. I would like to invite the judges to give any comments or questions. Okay, so alaikum, girls. All right, so I have a question for you. Okay, so since now, before this, COVID-19 is known as a pandemic. Okay, but now we already call it as endemic, where we need to live with it. Okay, so in your opinion, do you think Malaysians are ready for this? I'm sorry, sir, what was the question again? Okay, so before this, we know uh, COVID-19 as a pandemic. Okay, but now we call it as endemic, where we need to live with it. We cannot run away from it. Okay, so in your opinion, do you think Malaysians are ready for this? Does Malaysia are ready for this? Yeah. I think it's uh, yes, completely yes. But as we know, uh, our um, uh, our, our um, what we call that the efforts that the government need to do to uh, prepare uh, the uh, citizens, prepare Malaysia uh, to. It seems that the presenter is facing some technical difficulties. Can the other presenter please answer? Um, okay, Natasha, I'm sorry, you repeat can you question? repeat the question? Huh? Okay, so basically now COVID-19 is known as a, uh, endemic. Endemic means we need to live with it. We cannot run away from, from the virus. So do you think Malaysians are ready for this? Yes, I think uh, Malaysia is already uh, Malaysia is ready for this. As um, right now, the government is um, uh, the effort that was uh, that will be done by the government and has done, which is um, vaccination. 
So we want to uh, we want to achieve herd immunity. So of course, uh, the Malaysia is ready. And when we do when we did the questionnaire, um, most of our respondents are agreed that Malaysia is ready to uh, face this endemic phase. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you to the presenter. Now that concludes all the questions. With that, our question and answer session has now come to an end. Thank you once again, Sekolah Menengah Sains, Tengku Muhammad Faris Petra and the presenters, Dr. Natasha Izian Othman and Tengku Lija Wafa, Tengku Shahri Zani for such an informative presentation. Before moving on to the next school, does the audience want to know a fun fact? How about you, Hannah? Yep, I sure do. Well, Fuller Residential School's International Symposium is closely based around the idea of producing effective leaders who are aware of the current issues. Not only that, the sub-themes are also related to sustainable development goals outlined by the United Nations. There are actually seven themes SDGs in total, but this track specifically focuses on the eighth SDG, on decent work and economic growth. Hana, what do you think about the eighth F SDG? Well, for me, the importance of this SDG is how much it contributes to social mobility, and so that the under underprivileged people can have an avenue to improve their well-beings in these trying times. That was such a thoughtful insight. Thank you, Hannah. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now continue on with Sekolah Berasama Peno Integrasi Batu Rakit to present their video entitled COVID-19, Pandemic Effects on Global Economy. Here with us in the studio are Damia Uzma Imani Ahmad Zamani, and Nur Hidayatuna Bila Kamarudin. Please welcome. Amen. Teachers and friends, not forgetting our honorable judges. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Hidayatul Nabila and I'm with Uzma, Amna and Damia. It's an honor for us today to be here in this room to deliver a presentation. The title of our presentation is COVID-19. Does it change our economy? As we know, today mark another day of us living in this pandemic with hope for it to disappear. Hopefully, the presentation will bring us to discover the global economic consequences of COVID-19. Throughout the presentation, we will cover three main points. First, our research findings, second, ways to overcome the problem, and third, the summary of the whole presentation. So that would be the overall structure of our presentation. Before I start, let me bring us to understand the definition of our problem statement. Global economic is defined as how the economics of the world which we consider together as one economic system and that shows how worldwide economic activity between various countries that are considered intertwined and thus can affect other countries negatively or positively. Next is consequences. Consequences means results or effect, typically one that is unwelcome or unpleasant. Lastly, as far as all we know, COVID-19, which is a virus that originated in China that attacks the respiratory system in human beings. Therefore, in this presentation, I will show you what COVID-19 have done to our economic system globally. Now let's move on to the first point, which is our research findings. We have conducted a documentary research in order to obtain these information. I would love to point out that the economy system runs in a lot of sectors, but we chose those which are affected the most due to COVID-19 pandemic. First up, I will be explaining about the sector of manufacturing. Manufacturing is a sector of economy that produces finished products. It is a major part of the economy as it accounts for nearly 16% of the global gross domestic product GDP in 2018. As a result, the government across the countries primarily focuses on encouraging the manufacturing sector. However, 
After the coronavirus outbreak, our global economy witnessed a sharp decline, includes in manufacturing industries. For example, transportation, printing and publishing, fashion industries, and so on have represented the largest economic shock as the baseline forecast envisions of 5.2% contraction in global GDP in 2020. This really shows that the coronavirus outbreak have badly effect on manufacturing sector. Moreover, the COVID-19 does not only affect the manufacturing sector for the time being, but also will leave a great fundamental change even when the pandemic ends. This is because the manufacturer needs to adapt to a new normal in the economy for the long term in such a short time. However, certain of manufacturing sectors such as technology, healthcare, home repair, remodeling, and pharmaceutical industries has reported positive increases during this COVID-19 pandemic. Next up, we have the business sector. Business is defined find as organization or enterprising entity engaged in commercial industrial or professional activities it is important to our country as it contributes the local economies by growth and innovation of community plus business can give employment opportunities for people to generate income and improve their life however the Appearances of COVID-19 has completely caused a major economic shock to the sector. In the United States, a survey of more than 5,800 small businesses was conducted between March 28th and April 4th in 2020. The results suggest that the pandemic had already caused a massive dislocation among small businesses just several weeks after its onset and prior to the availability of government aid through the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security CARES Act. Across the full sample, 43% of businesses had temporarily closed and nearly all of these closures were due to COVID-19. While in Malaysia, an online survey was also conducted and received over 670 responses from large listed companies until small and medium-sized enterprises. In result, they concluded that the key challenges are from across five areas, which are financial, customer, technology, supply chain, and people. According to the survey, the top challenges for each area that that large listed companies and small and medium sized enterprises are facing was quite the same. They suffer from financial issues, including cash flow, liquidity, delays in receivables, and declines in revenue. Nearly half of the respondents have cited that a fall in demand is their key challenge during this pandemic. Large listed companies stated that delays in receiving supplies as the main supply chain challenge, while small and medium sized enterprises noted delays in fulfillment and delivery as their main challenge. All of this has proven that COVID 19 has set a massive change in economy, especially businesses from over the world, and on top of that, COVID-19 also will set a new normal for business owners after the pandemic is over in order to get back on stable position again. Next up, we have trading and I will be taking the lead from here. So, what is trading? Trading is a basic economic concept involving the buying and selling of goods and services the composition paid by a buyer to a seller or the exchange of goods or services between parties trade can take place within an economy between purchasers and consumers international trade allows countries to expand markets for both goods and services that otherwise may not have been available the covid 19 pandemic has drastically disrupted economic activities throughout the world in particular 
worldwide merchandise street flows decreased by 7% in 2020. Some of the few factors that are most likely to affect the international trade are each direct health impact and associated behavior change. The consequence of government's action to prevent the spread of the virus and the impact of the pandemic in third countries. The pandemic has totally shocked both producer and consumer. As we all know, China has been the world's biggest exporter and account for a significant proportion of global trade in natural resources. Due to the pandemic and lockdowns, supply chains to some countries with strong trade links to China, for example, Australia and Malaysia, have been affected badly. However, some few countries with equally strong links, such as Vietnam, managed to increase their trade flow. Lastly, we have tourism. Tourism are the activities of people traveling to and staying in places outside their usual environment. As a result of COVID-19 pandemic, international airports have to shut down and normally, they wouldn't let tourists in until the COVID-19 have decreased. COVID-19 made a big hit in this sector, including transportation, such as buses and cruise. Tourist companies such as hotels, homestay, and job loss. The findings in this sector is quite tough, but here is what we found. An article stating that money not used from the government to fund tourism has been used for the COVID-19 vaccinations. As they say, the COVID-19 vaccination investments are because of the economy and tourism sector cannot open Save me. Alright, now let's move on to the second point. Let's go by the questions. How do we solve or overcome this problem? There are some few ways we found that the world has been on track with. Due to the prolong of the pandemic, the economy for each sector cannot open or restart safely and sustainably unless the pandemic is controlled. Therefore, the government money that used to be used for tourism is used for vaccination investment to speed up the rate of vaccination in the country. Companies have to continue innovating as there are lots of opportunities to try new things to be successful in the long term. Plus, they can do streamlined process to introduce new pre-approval requirements to keep the business remains in a long time. Companies also need to launch new products and services as new demand patterns emerge which is more affordable price for users. Besides, shift to a flexible global manufacturing footprint also can help the globe to overcome the crisis. And for trading, there is a clear need for us to keep the supply chain going for the trade to keep flowing, both to ensure the supply of essential products and to send a signal of confidence for a global economy. Last but not least, our last point which is to summarize the whole presentation to view in a clearer way. Due to the pandemic COVID-19, a lot of sectors are affected and also benefited from it. There will be a question session shortly and I would like to end the presentation here. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Thank you, Sekolah Berasama Penuh Integrasi Batu Rakit for such a wonderful presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now continue on with the question and answer session. Any sort of inquiries are welcome in the chat box. Ask away. It seems that we have our first question from user Kride Sharma that goes, suggest some measures through your research to reju rejuvenate the tourism industry in the wake of the pandemic and partial travel bans. Can I present this clearly, eh? Will our presenters kindly answer the question?
can our presenters kindly answer the question? Or you, do you need some time to think about it? Okay, how about we go to another question from user Ainin Sofia Shasha. She would like to ask, do you think the government give the best solution to overcome the economic crisis? What are our presenters' thoughts? Can the presenters um, please answer? Um, okay. Yes, I think the government give the best solution to overcome the economic issue. Uh, we can see uh, um, the vaccination program that has been held by the government. Uh, so we can, so that the economic um, issues uh, can be, so that uh, the government can overcome the economic issues. Thank you, presenter, for the answer. We have another question from user Amna that goes, do you think it is important for teenagers to be aware about the current economical situation in our country? Why? Can our presenters kindly answer the question? Um, all right. Um, okay, in my opinion, uh, it is important for teenagers to be aware about the current economical situation in our country so they would know about uh, the economic issue as well as uh, they would be prepared uh, on how to react and as well as uh, living expenses. Thank you. Thank you for answering the user's question. Since there are no more questions from the audience, will our judges be kind enough, kind enough as to post any comment or inquiries for the presenters? Okay, good afternoon. Um, I just want to ask, uh, it was mentioned that Vietnam managed to raise their uh, trade flows. So how do they manage this actually? How do, how do they manage to do this to increase their trade flows? Thank you. Can I present this, please? Can. Maybe we can change a bit question. Yes. Um, uh, okay. So, uh, so for the business owners who are much affected by the pandemic, uh, how has the government of Malaysia uh, support business owners so far? Can our presenters try to answer the judge's question? Okay, last question. All right, so throughout the research, what did you learn? Well, I'm sorry, but the five minute is up. Uh, with that, our question and answer session has now come to an end. Thank you, Sekolah Berasama Penuh Integrasi Batu Rakit and the presenters, Amna Sofia and Nur Hidayatul Nabila for such a stimulating presentation. Alia, I would like to ask you, 
Do you know the importance of our sub theme today? Mm, I think I have some idea about it, but I'm not sure, Hannah. Would you care to explain? Of course. The sudden rise of the COVID-19 pandemic surely has disrupted billions of lives and impacted the global economy. Following the eight Sustainable Development Goals, its aim is to promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable enough economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. We are encouraging students to think outside the box and create possible solutions while resonating and feeling empathy for other people currently struggling economically in the midst of this pandemic. How's that, Anya? Wow, that's such a great aim. I really hope uh, the audience can learn a lot from this symposium. So from the previous presentations, we could see there was a lot of mentions about Langkawi. Let's learn more about this. We will now move on with the school Maktab Tentera Dirajit to present their video entitled COVID-19 Impact Towards Tourism on Local Islands. Here with us, we have Muhammad Nazim, Muhammad Nizam, and Muhammad Nur Adin Mat Yunus as the presenters for this presentation. Please welcome. This is what it looks like on the islands before the pandemic. The pandemic has affected all the sector of economy, especially tourism, across all over the world. In this year's fully residential school international symposium, we were given the sub theme Global Economic Consequences of the COVID 19 pandemic, and we have narrowed down to Malaysia's tourism, specifically on the islands. Hi, I'm 437085 Putra Muhammad Nazim bin Muhammad Nizam. I am 47102 Beauty Muhammad Nur Adin bin Muhammad Inus. I am 437171 Putra Muhammad Farish Shahmi bin Muhammad Shafi. I am 437082 Putra Narish bin Darzuki. This is our advisor teacher, Memunira, and we are the representatives of the Royal Military College. Islands play an important role in Malaysia's tourism, which contributes to the country's economy. Based on our findings, the three major types of businesses are dive shops, hotels, and local shops. Dive shops play an important role on island tourism because tourists come to visit the island to go on dive trips. The tourists go on dive trips because of our beautiful corals and to explore shipwrecks that we have around the islands. Hotels are needed for fulfilling the demands of tourists that come to the island. The tourists usually come to relax and enjoy themselves. They spend days languishing. Local shops contribute to the tourism economy as well. Well, actually, our research of local shops are targeted towards the sales of handicrafts, local snacks, handmade garments, and souvenirs. These businesses are operated by the locals to support the island's economy. Businesses ran by the locals are failing to operate due to the movement control order since the COVID-19 pandemic. The challenge Phase in the scuba diving activity is that they are highly dependent 
on international divers who come to visit the islands and see the corals. Likewise, the hotel industry is mostly dependent on tourists, local or foreign, where the local small businesses are mainly interrupted by the supply chain due to the movement control order that restricts traveling even within the states for Malaysians. The objective of this research is to find out how COVID-19 has affected tourism on local islands and finding possible solutions so their businesses can keep operating. Our research is done qualitatively and quantitatively as we have carried out interviews and surveys. Questionnaires were given to business owners of diving centers, hoteliers, and local businesses across islands on the east side of Malaysia. Let us share our findings. Dive shops on islands have seen a drop in retail sales as well as earnings from dive trips and classes for divers. Dive shops on the islands have lost over half of their operating season, which spans from March to October. Even if diving and training courses are allowed to begin, the number of divers and dive students is likely to be minimal. These islands' diving shops will suffer the most as they rely on a small number of revenue streams. The diving business employs a wide range of people in a variety of positions. Effects are extensive if divers do not buy equipment, do not take training, and do not travel, with no sector of diving related, employment being unaffected. The industry's capacity to recover will be hampered by difficulties with water activities and social distancing restrictions. Face-to-face -face training, whether in a pool or in shallow ocean water, carries with it an inherent danger of COVID-19 transmission. The employment in the hotel industry covers a broad spectrum of jobs such as kitchen staff, resort manager, and room service. Other than that, without financial support from the government like SME loans and monitoriums makes this industry hard to keep the business on the track. One of other main problems is lack of tourists due to the pandemic which leads to MCO and new SOPs which makes social activities services like spa and massage, and dining in restaurants impossible. This problem is going to be an ongoing burden on the industry's ability to recover. Local businesses have problems with surviving in the global pandemic because of their lower sales volume. This situation takes place since the implementation of movement control order that restricts customers' purchasing power. What used to be a haven for tourists, local or foreign, now seems to be gloomy and abandoned. These business owners also reported one of their biggest problems that is an interruption in supply chain. This burdens their production of items that they are selling and some of them even had to postpone the process of making goods. They believe that any industrial shutdown would be really a huge boulder that will literally freeze their businesses from making any progress. They could not hold on to themselves any longer if the movement control order drags on and this would make it impossible for them to live through the pandemic. Our study suggests some possible solutions that might work on the sectors that we have identified. These solutions can be executed by the government and the business owners. The first thing that the government can do is to implement travel bubbles. Secondly, they could open the tourism sectors to tourists who are fully vaccinated and to allow all water sports activities to those who are fully vaccinated and at optimum health level. Something the local businesses owners can do is provide free swap tests at the jetty upon arrival. Civilians could also spread awareness about this misery so NGOs can make fundraisers to support 
out your business owners on the islands. In conclusion, the island tourism needs more attention during the pandemic because they are one of the most affected sectors in Malaysia. We should not close an eye towards this sector because it plays an important role in our economy so the country can stand back up on its two feet. Our hope of restoring our country's economy depends on the tourism sector because it creates job opportunity and gives direct impact on the economy. If these ideas are not realized by the parties involved, the rate of unemployment will rise, leading to a revolt of crime rates. The revolt of crime rates will tarnish our country's reputation, leaving the tourists in doubt about visiting our country. If such things were to happen, this would be the beginning of Malaysia's economy downfall. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are watching this video, these business owners are dicing with death, desperate to keep their business alive, which is why we should take action this instant. Thank you all for watching. We welcome your feedback. Such a splendid research video. Thank you, Maktab Tantaradi Raja. Now, I'm sure all of you have some questions regarding the presentation just now. Fret not, as we will be starting the question and answer session. The audience may write down any questions in the chat box. First up, we have a question from the user, I mean Sofia Shasha. She asks, what do you think about the reopening of tourism sector? Is it relevant by looking back to daily cases? What are our presenters' thoughts? Uh, Assalamu alaikum to everyone and a good afternoon. So what I think about reopening the tourism sector and how is it relevant by looking back to the daily cases? Or well, I think uh, that it is very important to open the tourism sector. And uh, looking back to the daily cases, uh, each day is different and uh, at times uh, it is rising and at sometimes they go down. But uh, we still have to open the tourism sectors um, because the amount of people that are vaccinated in Malaysia are also rising. So we could open the tourism sectors up for the people who are vaccinated. Thank you for the great input. Any other questions from the audience? Next up, we have a question from user Zahira Muzamri that goes, if you are given the chance to contribute ideas on ways to make sure the strict SOP are followed by the tourists, what will you do? Can our presenters kindly answer the question? Um, I will take this question and thank you to Zahira Muzamir. Um, if, you, if I was given a chance to contribute ideas on ways to make the SOP streets uh, followed by the tourists, so first I will surely do a swap test um, from the arriving arrival to the hotels or to the jetties. So from this, we will bring it to the hotels and we just do the quarantine. We make sure they are quarantined, they quarantine and stay in the room without going anywhere else. And if there are any more ideas after it, then we will make sure that the places that they are allowed to go are very strict. So like if they were in Langkawi or if they were in these sort of areas, so they can only go to this from here to there and from here to there without crossing the lines, without crossing the borders and being used to the public. 
Yes, that's for me. Thank you, presenters, for your lengthy explanation. Any more questions from the audience today? Since there are no more questions, would the judges be kind enough to give any comments or pose any questions for the presenters? Okay, um, good afternoon. Uh, just one question. Um, as, teen as a teenager, if uh, you are a teenager from the island itself, how can you contribute to support the island entrepreneurs? So, um, the question from you, Ma'am Farah. If I was a teenager on the island, how could I contribute to the entrepreneurs? How do, can you contribute correct? to support the entrepreneurs support the on your island? Yeah. Um, so as a teenager uh, in this generation, uh, we are very hooked to the uh, social media and the internet. And it is probably a lie if you would uh, you wouldn't know anything about the internet, correct, if you were a teenager. So since everything is digitalized during the pandemic, um, to help the entrepreneurs on these islands as a teenager is by um, promoting their friends and families' um, businesses. And this is by going through Instagram shops and promoting on Shopee and such other else's um, applications and websites online. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you for the lengthy answer. I would love to continue with such an exciting question and answer session, but unfortunately, the five minutes is up. Thank you once again, Maktab Tenteredi Raja and the presenters, Muhammad Nazim, Muhammad Nizam, and Muhammad Nur ad -Din, Matt Yunus for such a stimulating presentation and answers. I'm sure some of, some of you uh, didn't get the chance to watch the morning session. So just to let you know, the first ever fully residential school international symposium was hosted by Skoda Fatima in 2011 with the team, students, a catalyst of change for a better tomorrow. Ever since its first inception in 2011, it has been held for a total of eight times, making this year's symposium being the ninth one held. And actually, this is the first time it's held online. Not only that, the last fully residential school international symposium was hosted by Skola Berasama Penuh Integrasi Gomba in 2019. The team was Smart Industry, Reforming the World. During the closing ceremony, the Putri Kencana Dance Group from Skola Sri Putri gracefully performed, indicating that Skola Sri Putri were to be the next host for the next host school for Fully Residential School International Symposium. Hana, did you have any obstacles while preparing for this online symposium well it's not it's not any but a lot <laughs> like i've mentioned before doing things online we can't exactly it won't go well according to what we want because it always depends on the internet or the device that we are using sometimes we have to face the obstacles and it's nothing that we can do because it is out of our reach for us to for us to reach yeah but i'm sure everyone here we all have our own problems and this event was definitely a big obstacle that we had to face in able to make it run smoothly well i agree with that it seems that our presenters are not yet in the studio. I will let, um, then I would like to inform all of you that there is, is an online quiz posted in the chat box. You can look at the pinned comment for the link to the quiz.
for your information. If you manage to answer the questions 80% correctly, you will be awarded with an achievement e certificate. The online quiz will be open until tomorrow at until tomorrow, 3rd October at 10 a.m. And just to notify that we have different sets of questions according to the tracks. So if you if you want to answer the other tracks questions also, you can always watch the watch I'm sorry, you can always rewatch this this symposium video. Looks like our presenters is still not here. So, uh, let me tell you something about our tracks for today. Do you, do you know that the sudden rise of the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted billions of lives and impacted the global economy? So following the eight sustainable development goal, its aim is to promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth full and productive employment and decent work for all. Here in the symposium, we are encouraging students to think outside the box and create possible solutions while resonating and feeling empathy for other people currently struggling economically in the midst of this pandemic. Hana, how do you feel about those people who are struggling during this pandemic? Well, as we all know, there are people out there that aren't as privileged as we are. They have trouble even having to find food, water, and etc. So I think that we need to raise awareness about these people's situations and the problems that they face during this pandemic. We over here, we might have the privilege to have food, water in front of our eyes whenever we want. But there are people out there that because of this pandemic, they have trouble having to find necessities that they need for their daily lives. Yes, I actually agree with that. And that is why through this symposium, I hope we can learn a lot about the other people who are struggling and empathize with them. Well, it seems that our presenters are finally here. I would like to invite our presenters from Sekolah Menengah Science Kubang Pasu to present their research video entitled The Effects of COVID-19 on unemployment rate in the selected ASEAN three countries. Here with us in the studio are Siti Sarah Marzuki and Nur Farhad Tushuhada Rohaiza. Please welcome. Corona is a war against the deleterious outbreak of coronavirus. Nowadays, millions of people are suffering from poverty due to a pandemic which has been spreading uncontrollably since the fourth quarter of 2019. But before that, hi, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very pleasant day to honorable judges, distinguished guests, ladies. It seems that we are having some technical difficulties. Um, I hope we have the audience understanding. Corona is a war against the deleterious outbreak of coronavirus. Nowadays, millions of people are suffering from poverty due to a pandemic which has been spreading uncontrollably since the fourth quarter of 2019. But before that, hi, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very pleasant day to honorable judges, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We are Kupsis Andromeda from Kubang Pasu Science School. I Nur Farhatu Shuhada Binti Rohizad would like to introduce my team members who have been working alongside me on this research. I would like to introduce Rukistina Binti Muhammad Hafiz, Siti Sarah Binti Maizuki, as well as Amira Batricia Binti Fazlan Amini. And we are blessed to be under Mr. Muhammad Sobir bin Hamza Swings in conducting this research. The team's assigned for us is global economic consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. Without further ado, we would like to take you for an overview on the effect of COVID-19 pandemic on unemployment in selected ASEAN three countries as per our research topic for the ninth Online Fully Residential Schools International Symposium for 2021. All right, Nurkistina, the floor is yours. What is economic growth? 
In general, economic growth describes an increase in the quantity and quality of the economic goods and services that a society produces and consumes. Amadou 2020 stated that gross domestic product, GDP, is the combined value of all the services and goods manufactured within a country's geographical borders for a specific time frame, usually yearly. Framework 2020 contends that if GDP growth is negative, it may indicate that an economy is in or approaching a recession or an economic downturn. Positive economic growth will have both pros and cons to society. Economic growth is positively associated with job creation. However, Kurniashi and Kartika 2020 stated that decreasing unemployed people will raise inflation. In the endogenous growth model, the force that contribute to economic growth come from within the country. A simple endogenous growth model's production function shows the aggregate output as a linear equation of aggregate capital stocks. The model is commonly known as the AK model, where YT, KT, and A denotes aggregate output, aggregate capital stocks, and technology respectively. KT is treated as a combination of physical and human capital and reproducible with similar technologies, says Lucas1988. So, Based on this, it shows the importance of human capital on the economy. Auguste Law stated that the unemployment rate negatively correlates with real GDP, says Hassan 2020. Hence, an increase in unemployment would affect output. The outbreak of coronavirus, or known as the COVID-19 pandemic, that was first found in Wuhan, China, has severely impacted the world economy. Kernan 2019 highlighted that the pandemic would negatively impact both the individual and economy of the countries. Governments worldwide have implemented precautions such as social distancing or school closures to pre prevent and control the growth of the COVID-19 pandemic, say Asahi and all in 2021. However, Dijangkor and Panusa 2020 stated that strict social distancing has negatively affected informal workers' income prospects, which may increase poverty. In addition, Bella 2020 examined the short-term consequence of COVID-19, and their findings suggest that COVID-19 decreased hours of work and labor force participation and increased the unemployment rate. When we talk about employment, we need to look at human capital. Generally, it refers to the quality of the workers who become assets to a company. Pons, Burnett, Williams, and Paradise 2017 stated that two of the reasons influencing employment were interest and personal satisfaction. While Saini and Jawahar 2021 added culture and values, career opportunities, and employment experience are other reasons that influence employment. This is from the employee's point of view. From a macroeconomic point of view, people would think that increase in economic growth would positively affect employment. People might assume that a 1% increase in economic growth would increase employment by the same rate. However, Akram et al. 2014 stated that only a 3% increase in economic growth would boost employment by 1%. It happens because of many reasons. One of them is underemployment. While well, nearly 2010 stated that firms sometimes feel reluctant to employ more people due to strict employment rules. When the economy is unstable, employment opportunities will become less and people will start losing jobs. Hence, the employees might lose their source of income. So the unemployment rate will increase. The situation becomes worse when we add the COVID-19 pandemic into this scenario. With the implementation of new standard operating procedures and movement control orders, finding a suitable job based on interest, personal satisfaction, and career opportunities, as highlighted by Pons et al. 2017 and Saini and Jawahar 2021, might no longer be an option. Hence, to look at this issue, this study is conducted. As explained earlier, the effect of COVID-19 is disastrous, affecting the life of the people 
economic activities and even economic growth of a country. So one of the critical issues that we would like to highlight is the effect of the virus on the unemployment rate. As the issue is recent, studies looking at the effect of COVID-19 on economic growth and unemployment rate are still sparse. Hence, this study is conducted to examine the effect of the virus outbreak on three selected ASEAN countries, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand from 2011 to 2020. Countries consist of Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. According to the World Bank Group 2015, ASEAN countries were reported to have the second fastest economic growth in Asia. An International Monetary Fund or IMF 2019 putting it as the fourth fastest economic growth in the world after China, the USA, and India. On the 1st of April 2013, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand announced the implementation of the ASEAN Disclosure Standards. Financial restriction has been removed between the signing countries. It promotes better financial services and investment procedures between the countries and will help increase trade and economic growth in return. However, Chong Li and Yip 2021 stated that ASEAN countries rely heavily on trade, especially with the USA and China. So, when the pandemic started in China in 2019, the effect caused a disturbance in Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand economic growth. The descriptive statistic depicted in this table indicate that Malaysia has an average growth of 4.03% with a maximum growth from 2011 to 2020 equal 6.01% and a minimum growth equal to negative 5.58%. On the other hand, Singapore possesses an average growth of 2.98% with maximum GDP growth equal to 6.33%. The minimum GDP growth in Singapore is equal to negative 5.39%. Finally, Thailand possesses an average growth of 2.28%, with the maximum growth equals 7.24%, and minimum growth equals negative 6.08%. For your information, the lowest GDP growth depicted by Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand are from the year 2020. In looking at the dispersion, we can look at the value of the standard deviation. The higher the value of standard deviation will indicate that the growth is inconsistent. As depicted here, we can see that Thailand and possess the highest dispersion for GDP, which is 3.46. However, the value is not far from Malaysia at 3.42, and Singapore recorded the lowest standard deviation of 3.22. The average growth of unemployment is 3.31% for Malaysia, 3.92% for Singapore, and 0.66% for Thailand. Also, we can see that Thailand possess the lowest unemployment rate with the maximum value equal to 1.02% and the lowest is 0.21% only. In addition, Thailand also shows the lowest standard deviation compared to Malaysia and Singapore. The data shows that the effect of COVID-19 on unemployment is also significant. The maximum rate for unemployment for all ASEAN three countries was the highest in 2020. The maximum value is depicted in the table. In conclusion, the descriptive statistic depicted here show the effect of COVID-19 on both indicators, economic growth and unemployment rate. With the evidence laid out, COVID-19 is disastrous on the employment rate in the country selected. Hence, we are proposing a few initiatives. First, as explained earlier, the effect causes there's an increase in the unemployment rate in the selected ASEAN three countries, leading to income loss. So, the government should play a significant role in softening the effect by lowering or reforming the taxes and providing subsidies on essential items. Tax reforms will be helpful for corporations and private sectors to deal with the pandemic, especially for small and medium industries, and maintain employment. Secondly, the government needs to work hand in hand with corporate sectors to identify the needs for current employment methods to open more employment opportunities within the constraints conditions. Finally, people must change their attitude and not be too selective in looking for jobs and people should learn to accept and live the way we are now. That is all from COPSIS. Thank you.
Thank you Sekolah Menengah Sains Kubang Pasu for such an informative presentation. Now, let's proceed with the question and answer session. Any sort of inquiries are welcome in the chat box. Ask away. It seems that we have our first question from user Siti Ashira Ismail that goes, what is the best finding of your research? Perhaps you can share it with us? Can our presenters kindly answer the question? Can our presenters try to answer the user question? Um, may I answer this question? Okay, yes, so you may. The, best, uh, the best finding of uh, our research is um, basically the increase in unemployment rate will significantly affect the, the GDP growth um, but and uh, if the unemployment rate is negative, which is will affect the GDP, and if the GDP uh, decrease as well, then it will mostly means that the economic growth are going through downturn or recession. But if the economic growth are increasing, it has pros and cons, uh, which is it will give a positive effect on employment when many people have works. But if everyone have works and the unemployment were too low, then this will raise in inflation. Thank you for answering. Here comes another question from the user Zahira Muzamir that goes, keeping businesses open during the pandemic is important for economical stability. However, public health are at risk due to the airborne COVID-19 virus. What is your opinion on this matter? Can the presenters please share your opinions? My opinion on this matter is, yes, uh, keeping businesses open do really important to economical uh, stability, but to make sure everyone can still live their life and gather their income, they still uh, we still need to open the economy sector. We need to open the job and people need to go out for work. So what do we need to do is, um, Everyone need to get vaccinated and people need to follow the strict SOP. Also, uh, with the percentage of people uh, that resulted in majority Malaysians has already got vaccinated. So it's quite safe, but it's still unsafe to go out to work. But since uh, majority of people already got vaccinated, and with strict SOPs at the workplace, also in a public place, I'm sure everyone will always safe to go to work and open the economy uh, sectors back. Thank you so much for the answer. Since there are no more questions from the audience, oh, there is. Okay, we have our next question from the user Kride Sharma that goes, when the micro and macro businesses are running in massive losses, can you suggest some measures to increase an employment opportunities and GDP in ASEAN countries? Thank you for the question. Okay, as I explained earlier in our presentation, um, I have, uh, we have some um, initiative, uh, some initiative uh, for the government role to offering allowing the business 
for providing subsidies? So the money we can providing some um, job opportunities to to people that um, people that affect to the COVID nineteen. Yes, I think that's my answer. I hope the answer stay the same. Thank you, presenters, for answering the user question. Is there any more question from the audience? Since there are no more questions from the audience, will the judges post any comments to the presenters? Okay, assalamualaikum. This is going to be a bit very quick. Okay, so what I like about your presentation, uh, you have all the theories and then your reference, references at the back. Okay, uh, one of the school that for me, I think it's it's almost complete. Okay, your the good thing is your references and also the theory that you use for the research. Thank you. Well, that concludes all the questions. With that, our question and answer session has now come to an end. Thank you, Sekolah Menengah Sains Kubang Pasu and the presenters Siti Sarah Marzuki and Rafahatu Shuhaida Rohaiza for the simulating presentation. Before we move on to the final team for today, let's have a little chat about the vaccines or the vaccination program, as since it has been mentioned quite a few times in our symposium today. So as we all know, um, it has been a while since the under 18 students in Malaysia have been starting to get their vaccine appointments or already have gotten their first dose. Some already have gotten their second dose. Um, so, I would like to ask you, Alia, since I'm sure you have gotten your first dose too, what was your, what was your experience during getting your first dose? Well, um, during the first dose, I was actually quite nervous because, you know, it's the first time you're going to, you're going out to get your vaccination, right? Then actually during the procedure, the staff there was very friendly and I feel quite welcome there. And after I get the vaccination actually doesn't even hurt at all. And even after I got my first dose, I didn't feel any side effects. It means that uh, I'm quite healthy and not I didn't feel like fatigue or something like that. That's good to hear. I'm generally afraid of needles or anything sharp. So at first, I did need a few time, few minutes to gather myself courage in order to get the shot. But Alhamdulillah, I got the first dose and at first my body did feel a bit weak. But right now, I'm feeling great. So I would like to raise awareness about the importance of vaccines and I hope all of you have gotten your vaccines and are going to get the second dose in the future. Now. It is the time that we all have been waiting for. What is it, do you ask? It's the time for the final team for the symposium today to present their video. Last, but definitely not least, let's welcome on board the group from St. Mark's Senior Secondary Public School, Mirabakh, India, with their research video entitled, Global Economic Consequences of the COVID-19 Pandemic. Here with us today, we are so privileged to have Arshita Barva and Gita Rajan as the presenters. Hello everyone, I'm Asta Suhita. Hello everyone, I'm Arshita Barva. I am Chitragar. Hello everyone, I am Asim Talwar of class 10 and we are from St. Mark's Senior Secondary Public School, Mirabagh, New Delhi, India. The year 2020 would always be remembered, not because it introduced a highly contagious and threatening virus, but also because many livelihoods got ruined due to same. 
COVID-19 virus has not only shown an enormous impact on the healthcare sector but has also hindered the economy of all the nations due to downfall in GDP as there was a closure on economic activities. People tried many attempts to cope up from the economic crisis but the things were all changed. Although work from home was introduced as a preventive measure, but through that people became prone to many other problems like less sales in businesses, reduced salaries, etc. COVID-19 has also had a mass effect on the mindsets of the people as they have got less spending power due to less income and therefore both the businessmen and employees are vulnerable to a great loss. The savings of the people are now diminished as the money earned and saved was spent on the treatment of infected people. To study the topic, we conducted surveys. Let us brief you about our research methodology. We studied the responses by the community to the set of questions put upon the online survey forms. We asked the people about the impact of COVID-19 on their economic conditions. The people also shared their thoughts on the government's plan of action and their recommendations on the better management of the economic crisis. We also managed to get some offline interviews while taking all the necessary precautions. The interviews helped us to know a lot about the ongoing situation and people's view on the same. We covered several sections in the interviews we conducted. First, the unprivileged section. Second, the middle class. Third, the healthcare workers. And fourth, the business class. We have to live with our spending and we cannot spend our leisure or luxury. हम सब के साथ होगा क्योंकि हम का काम धाम तो आए नहीं इसके वजह से अब ज़्यादा परेशान हैं। You know some some bit of expenditure because when you're working from from an office the AC cost the cost from cost from operating from home is very different but you know I think in the past one and a half years it has it is pretty much stable we have we are now living with you know the fact that this is going to continue for the next couple of years. Uh, so the cost is pretty much stable. So before this all pandemic situation happened, I got placed luckily. And uh, in another one month or so after uh, you know getting enrolled in my job, the pandemic hit, and everything was shut down. Though being uh, in a pharmaceutical company, we were the backbone of the industry as uh, our company was somewhere related to it. Is that I have been following, you know, they are, uh, you know, after the first admission itself, even though government has given a capping on the uh, hospital bills, but still, because of their prolonged hospital stay and prior uh, decrease in their income because of the prolonged lockdowns, these patients are really suffering and they are having a financial crunch. They find it very difficult to pay the hospital bills and once they are discharged, they are again coming back even after 10 days or 15 days with some other complications. Through the surveys and the interviews, we observed the following. A research was conducted by our team through Google Forms and several interviews. We observed that people had been severely affected by COVID-19. Small-scale businessmen and young employees witnessed substantial losses. The per capita income projected to decline as unemployment and shutting down of businesses were common those days. Furthermore, the economic crisis affected the underprivileged section of our society to a great extent as well, as their incomes which were originally very less, witnessed even more downfall. The people witnessed an immense loss in businesses. The big businessmen were affected due to fall in stock markets. The middle class businessmen were affected as their sales diminished due to lockdown. 
that resulted in withdrawal of money which was invested in the business the small scale businessmen were affected as the sales were extremely low which eventually resulted in closure of the businesses and unemployment we did a survey to find out if people had been affected by the pandemic economically 76.1% of the people agreed that they were affected while 23.9% people disagreed They also prepared themselves mentally and financially for any uncertain mishap happening. People started making easy handmade products which provided them with employment. This was mostly practiced by the labor class who could not find work. The government also tried to provide people of economically lower sections with daily rations and cereals. When asked about the quality of the goods, people were not very satisfied and complained about various things but still it proved to be helpful many people of the labor class migrated back to their hometowns most of them decided to cultivate on their lands and be with their families Wow, thank you St. Mark's Senior Secondary Public School for such a wonderful presentation. I'm sure we are all astounded by the great video. Now, let's proceed with the question and answer session. Any sort of inquiries are welcome in the chat box, so ask away. First up, a question from the user, writes Anne. She asks, what is the best solution that India has done to improve its economy. Can the presenters please share with us? Thank you so much for the question. The best solution taken by the government was the introduction of Atmanirbhar Bharat plan. Now the meaning of Atmanirbhar Bharat is self-sufficient India. Through this program, it emphasizes that India will produce more and therefore the people of India will produce and the GDP will rise. In this program, the government provided a payment uh, money equal to 20,000 trillion, which is 10% of India's GDP to the people to start the startups and small businesses. Through this way, the economy will definitely witness an uprise and it will get recovered. May I add to this uh, Asim's point? Um, the government has actually helped a lot of people who could not uh, gather money 
with uh, this they gave people money ranging from 2000 rupees to 10000 rupees to start small businesses and uh, especially the kids are uh, uh, in from grade 9 to 12 the government has uh, given them money to uh, to help them start small businesses Thank you so much for the lengthy explanation. Next up, we have a question from user Ilya Maisara Binti Hafizuddin that goes, on the role of the government, do you think help should be given in the form of direct cash payments or pre-existing welfare programs? Can our presenters kindly answer the question? Thank you for the question. Well, pre-existing welfare programs are definitely helpful, but yes, if the help is provided in the form of loans to the small-scale uh, manufacturers, those who are trying to open up their businesses in such devastating times, it would be extremely helpful. And if the government uh, government has uh, provided credit cards also of 25,000 rupees to the people who are starting new businesses, and if such helps are provided by the government, then definitely the economy would uh, witness a better uprise. Uh, may I add to this point that the government uh, providing with the welfare programs, I think that uh, that would help uh, in the better livelihood of the people. But if uh, they have to like um, they have to uh, help the country grow, uh, uh, the economy of the country grow, I think that the, the government should provide the people with loans and the lower interest uh, provided by the banks. Thank you very much for your informative and lengthy explanation. Since there are no more questions from the, from the audience, I would like to invite the judges to give any comments or pose any inquiries to our presenters. Right, I have a question. Uh, you mentioned underprivileged section. Uh, what is the range income for this section? If you have the data, That's yes. Great. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, you your for question. question. Ma'am, the uh, unprivileged section actually uh, is to, are those who are migrant laborers and those who survive on daily wages. For example, we had taken an interview from a fruit seller, and he belongs to an unprivileged section. So his income per day is extremely uncertain. He doesn't know how much he's going to earn, and for that, the government of India had provided daily ra uh, rations to the people. That means uh, the wheat and the rice so that on a very low price so that the people could survive. And the unprivileged sections are definitely finding it really difficult to survive in such uh, devastating times because it is really unpredictable and uncertain for them. Thank you for answering the judges' questions. What about the other judges? Any questions? You mentioned that uh, laborers uh, migrated to the, their hometowns to indulge into farming. So, uh, can you please maybe explain a bit on this? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, ma'am. I would like to elaborate that the migrant, that the workers or the working class that used to work in the cities and the towns, since all of the construction sites and the other infrastructure uh, programs which were going on were shut. The, the people thought, uh, the laborers thought that it would be beneficial if they went back to their hometowns where they, some of them, like most of them own small cultivative lands. So uh, they started farming there and also they, uh, they felt a little secure when they were around their villagers or they, they were around their family members. So the people, uh, like the laborers migrated back to their hometowns to start and started cultivating Pardon their me. land. I'm very sorry. I never want this question and answer session to end. However, the five minutes is up. With that, our last question and answer session today has now come to an end. Thank you so much, St. Mark's Senior Sec Secondary Public School and the presenters, Arshita Barba and Asim Talwar, for such lengthy and informative answers. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We have now reached the end of our symposium for today. Before we wrap up, 
I would like to inform all of you that there was an online quiz posted in the chat box. You can look at the pinned comment for the link to the quiz. For your information, the, the Google form for the quiz is only accessible from today then at 10 a.m. until tomorrow, 3rd October, at 10 a.m. For your information also, an ECE certificate will be sent to your email if you obtain 80% correct answers. You may also go to individual, individual school videos in case you miss any during the presentations. So, all the best! Lastly, thank you to all the judges, teachers, participants, and audience present for your undivided attention in this session. We really appreciate you all for taking the time out to be with us here today. Unfortunately, despite the interesting presentations and question and answer sessions, all good things must come to an end. This marks the end of our symposium for today. Hopefully, the research presentations have shed new light and given us new insights on the issues involving the COVID-19 pandemic. And for that, I represent both of us to apologize for any inconvenience that we may have caused throughout the program. Fret not, we will resume with more research sharing tomorrow at the same time as today's session. With that, we, we thank, thank you. you. Till we meet again.